Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, we are going to clarify the difference between masking versus geometry masking inside Adobe Substance 3D Painter. Let's get started. All right, let's start by layer masking, something that many of you are already familiar with. What I have in the scene is a simple monitor geometry with a base, tiny legs are all around, a visor and a display surface that needs to be a glass reflective material. And that's a typical scenario for using layer masking. So any layers can be masked inside Adobe Substance Painter to display their content only on specific parts of their texture. If you would like to apply masks, you can just right click on the material that you have selected and go ahead and add a white mask, black mask or colored mask, which reads from your ID map. I've already baked all of my maps here. That's why I could apply smart material but that's how you apply mask you can even go in here and click on this icon and apply mask with color selection which is from your id mac apply black and white mask or even bitmap mask now a typical scenario is you would like to have uh, another object right on the top and just go ahead and say add black mask and with that, you get your masking brush active, which is always white if you pick black mask, and it's going to be black if you apply white mask. The size, fall off, and any attributes with regards to this brush can be changed inside the properties. And now you need to spend the time, zoom in and start painting you can do that. You can hold down shift and go with the straight line. Um, you can actually have that applied through this pane here. So you can kind of target your UV shells to do that. There are many ways of doing this. So based on the content that you have, you have various ways of applying this material on this model. And that's how you target a specific part of your model to do your masking. Sometimes it's not really that easy. For example, let's say I have this still painted material. I am going to duplicate that, move it on the top and right click on it and apply another black mask. Uh, the masking has been disabled. So holding down shift, left click to enable that. You can even go ahead and clear the existing mask that you have, or even go ahead and remove the mask that you have and start over if you want to, right? But let's say I would like to target different areas inside this geometry. I'm just gonna go in here and change a few attributes. Let's say I would like to change the base model to a much darker, green and I'm going to go up collapse the smart material group and I'm going to call this steel legs and I start painting on some of these areas but you soon notice that it's not going to be that easy I need to do lots of cleanups in here so Yes, sometimes it's very straightforward. If you prepare the scene, for example, if you put all of these legs into a separate texture set, then you can just simply drag and drop your material on your texture set where you can see I have UV tiles, but don't have any texture sets. So the process can be a little bit cumbersome and lengthy to say the least. So there is a an alternative if you would like to target different areas in your geometry and especially if you're dealing with multi mesh geometry where you combine different pieces into one and that is through geometry masking 
So while this layer masking method has its own merits, let's go ahead and check geometry masking and different types of geometry masking and see how we can speed up this workflow inside Adobe Substance Painter and get a better result faster. All right, I'm going to start with Autodesk Maya to explain geometry masking because we have two different types of geometry masking and preparing the scene for them is fairly straightforward. Sometimes you don't need to prepare anything to be honest with you. Um, but let's talk about what geometry masking is. The geometry mask is where you would like to mask a layer based on the 3D geometry that you have. So if these legs are a separate node, then in Substance Painter, you are going to drag and drop your material onto them and they will get painted. So how? We have two main types. The first type is by mesh names, where all you need to do is to have certain objects as a geometry. So basically I combined these tiny legs as a one mesh. The glass is one mesh, the visor is one mesh, and the base is one mesh. And to be honest with you, every single time I model something, that is how I finalize my model. So you need to prepare, but really there is no preparation because that's just a natural workflow. So all I need to do is to select these guys and go to File and go to Export Selection and export everything as OBJ. I've already done that, so let's switch to Adobe Substance Painter and see what's going to happen when we bring the model back in. All right, I'm inside Adobe Substance Painter and I'm going to start with new and let's go to file and select the OBJ that we had. I don't have any UDMs or anything else, so I'm just going to click OK. Now I'm about to apply smart material and you all know hopefully by now and in order to have those, we need to bake our textures. So I'm just going to go texture set settings, bake mesh maps, and I'm going to go 2K introduce a little bit of anti-aliasing, everything else is set to default, bake selected textures. Now that's done, I can see that my maps have been generated successfully, I'm gonna go to layers, I probably don't need that default layer, press delete on it, and I start by bringing my first smart material. Again, the whole idea is not to tweak the smart material and get the best look, that's a different story, beyond the scope of what we're talking, we are going to focus on masking. So let's assume that what you have looks perfect, right? How to apply geometry mask without right clicking on the model and uh, apply different masks because that's layer masking. This feature is still being displayed on the layer as a dotted rectangle. That is geometry masking. How to work with it? Once you select your material, let's go ahead, actually, I'm going to go and bring the secondary material, I'm just going to apply a simple glass. Let's say I have the glass underneath. So what we have, we're mimicking the scenario that we had for layer masking. I'm just going to see how I can apply glass to this. Now you would be amazed how easy that is. So all you need to do is to click on this guy and let's see what we have in the properties of your geometry mask. Adobe asks you, what area would you like to mask? Would you like to mask the visor or you would like to keep the visor and just mask the glass? I can just say only mask the glass and you can see I can highlight and look at different parts selecting on the thumbnail and voila it says in here three meaning that three geometry masks have been applied to three items and if i click on it in fact i have three items ticked off 
You can just continue with this fashion and mask out different parts of the geometry. Let's say I have the steel painted. I'm just going to go to geometry mask and you say, you know what? I just want to mask the rest of them and only have the leg monitor as steel stained material. And there I have it. You can continue with this, of course, and say, all right, you know what? I'm just going to have another material and that can only be applied to the visor. So I'm just going to click on geometry mask and tick off everything but the monitor geometry visor and see how easy and intuitive that is to use geometry mask to your advantage to target different parts of your model and all you need to do is you just need to make sure that you name everything properly inside your application package and keep things separate which is by default a good practice you can right click at any point of time and say include all or exclude all if you would like to include or exclude and the part that I said is non-destructive is at any point of time you can go use different tick boxes and say oh you know what I changed my mind I want this steel stained to be applied to the visor not to the legs and I want this uh, red paint to be applied to the legs not the visor and if I go in here all of a sudden we have a different result no painting no erasing no masking it's all done for us so I just love this way of masking which is called geometry masking now let's go back to Maya I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing not by using mesh names but by doing this through UV tiles now you use UV tiles workflow when you do not want to have multiple objects in your scene in this case I have just a single node and it's called monitor and sometimes the situation asks for it when you need to combine multiple objects and how are you going to use geometry masks because well the first method geometry mask supposed to target individual mesh names in this case we have only one well you still can pull that off through UVs so if I go in here and change my workspace to UV editing to see both windows all you need to do is to separate geometries based on their UV shells and give each piece a different UV shell. That's all you need to apply geometry mask to them inside Adobe Substance Painter. You can see that my display or my glassy surface gets the UDIM 1001, the visor gets 1002, and the base gets 1003 and the legs get 1004 all right enough said let's go ahead and export that as an obj and open it inside adobe substance painter and see how we can make use of geometry mask to apply different materials into different uv sets all right, here I am inside Adobe Substance Painter. As usual, I'm just going to go to File, New, and pick my file. Now, because I'm using UDIMs, I need to make sure that Use UV Tile Workflow is on, something that we didn't do in the previous example because I had all the UV shells within 0 to 1. I'm going to go OK. And the only difference is right now, Again, I'm dealing with a single texture set, but I have four UDIMs. And of course, because I'm planning on using Smart Material, I would like to go ahead and bake my mesh maps. Again, I'm going to go with the same settings and bake selected textures. It's going to go through each UV patch. All done. I'm going to do a quick check. And in fact, that is the case. I'm going to use the same material that I used in the past. So I'm just going to go and scroll all the way down and probably don't need this layer one default. Just drag and drop steel material. 
and that's how we started right now let's say we are going to use geometry mask again this time using UV tiles so just like before I'm going to search for glass I'm just going to drag and drop the glass in here and as usual we all know now that this rectangle is in charge of geometry masking if I click on it look what I get instead of getting separate meshes I'm getting the name of the UV tiles if you remember 01 was the monitor 02 was the visor 3 was the base mesh and 4 was the legs and the good thing about that object gets highlighted so probably all I need to do is just to deselect all of them and only enable what I want to be visible as UV tile and just select the material and voila as simple as that again you can repeat the exact same scenario I can just drag and drop this still paint bring it over let's say I would like to apply that to the visor only so I'm just going to click here the visor was 02 so I'm just going to deselect the rest of them and done and that's how you paint through masked geometry so um, there are a lot of benefits again to this workflow it's a lot faster to set up and it offers better performance it's non-destructive and just like paint masking and layer masking the geometry mask can also be applied on a group or have an impact on multiple layers as you can see all right that's it for this tutorial i hope i clarified the difference between layer masking and geometry masking i hope I, it was simple enough for everyone to follow along i will put this uh, model up on my patreon page if in case if you would like to download this and follow along step by step thank you very much guys for all of your support and help and please keep the suggestions coming i would love to see what you guys want to learn and i will target those areas of course you can follow me on twitter as well to bring yourself up to speed with regards to any upcoming projects thank you very much until the next video see ya